Hey everybody. Today we're going to learn how to make beautiful slideshow presentations using R, RStudio, and Quarto. I'm going to teach this topic by walking through some of the steps I've been using as I've been preparing a real life presentation on decision trees. And in this presentation on decision trees, I have a title slide with a nice transition to another slide with two columns showing a table and a ggplot. Notice I've got a nice background here and a footer down at the bottom. On the next slide, I have a call out box about decision trees and then a pause and an included image that's centered appropriately and sized nicely. And then finally, in this presentation, I'm gonna to wanna to talk about the code a little bit. So I included some code with the output of the code right below. And then as I page through the different slides, different elements of the code are highlighted as you can see there. So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna teach you how to do all of that and more. Okay, so um, I've got a bare bones set up here already. And I got that by uh, just going up to this sort of piece of paper in the corner of my RStudio um, IDE. And I went to Quarto Presentation. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which of these two you go to because it's because Quarto is so flexible, as I'll show you in a second. That'll pull up a nice little window where you can pick the format of your presentation as well as the title and set the author if you like. I'm gonna do Reveal.js, which is gonna give us some pretty flexible HTML slides. Beamer is great if you've got LaTeX, that's how I often work. PowerPoint if you're coming more from a Microsoft perspective. I'll hit cancel for now since I've already got it. Again, it doesn't make a huge difference because all that really matters here, is, all that's really gonna change is what shows up in this part of the YAML header under format. And uh, if you do have you know, a PDF document that's being generated from Quarto or an HTML file, whatever, you can just go in and change that to reveal.js and it'll immediately switch over to making slides. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and hit render. This is really a bare bones version and I just put in a few things so that you wouldn't have to watch me code every single thing in. And um, the bare bones version has a not so great looking title slide, no columns with my ggplot, and uh, no included image, and no call out box. Also no footer, few other differences that you'll notice. So uh, let's get into it. First let's tinker around with this YAML header, and this will give us, um, this will allow us to set options for the entire presentation, as well as to mess with that title slide. First let's put in the author. I'm Andrew Gard, nice to meet you. Um, that's all I'm gonna put into my actual presentation, but if I wanted to, another one that I frequently put in is date. And um, Quarto's pretty forgiving in terms of how you put in the date. So for instance, you know, it might be, uh, I don't know, 25 February, 2025. That's pretty far in my future as I record this. Um, just for instance, I'll leave that out. Let's see here. The, um, the other thing I wanna do right at the start is to get that footer in here. So after format reveal JS, I'm gonna start putting in some other options. I want a footer and I want, how about the name of my channel? Equitable equations and uh, it's decision trees. is gonna be the name of this presentation. The typos have begun already. I think I need quotes around this. Um, otherwise that colon is gonna confuse Quarto and make it unhappy. So let's render and make sure those two things worked out properly. You see the footer down at the bottom, you see my name in there. That's great. Notice the way this worked. Format colon, then um, uh, a new line and a tab, then the format colon, new line and a tab, and then the footer option refers specifically to the real VLJS format. If I wanted to have a different format as well, I would de-indent. Is that a word, de-indent? Okay, let me show you how to do one other thing here, maybe two other things, but let's start with a logo. So in some of my vids where I have slideshows that I've made using Beamer, I have my face down at the lower right-hand corner, and so I can do that in Quarto as well. So it's face.png in this case, and if I hit render, really creatively named, um, creative name for my file with my face in it, I know. But uh, there it is, you can see my face there, really small in the lower right. I'm gonna take it out because um, in my nicer version, I have this background image and I decided that my face doesn't look so great on top of that, it, uh, it ends up being too noisy. So I'll take that out. I think one other thing I wanna show um, and then take out again 
from my YAML header is theme. So the default theme is maximizing um, accessibility. It's pretty basic. It looks nice, I think, but um, there's lots of other choices. So there's a dark theme, for instance. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. There we go. You know, love it, hate it, it's up to you. Here, this is maybe not the best because the ggplot theme that I'm using has an all-white panel background, so, you know, it's a little bit, uh, little bit clunky, I think. I'm gonna take that out. There's lots of different themes. You can Google Quarto themes to, to see a full list of that. The other thing I do wanna do and leave in is to put in a, uh, a transition. And so I want transition. <laughs> and I wanna strike a balance between just sort of clicking from one side slide to the next, which is really rough. And um, at the other extreme, doing something that might be too distracting. And there are two that I tend to use. The first one is fade. I'll show that. The name kind of uh, says it all in this case. You can see how it just sort of uh, fades from one to the next. The one I've chosen for this presentation is slide. So it will literally slide from uh, one side to the next and kind of wipe out from one slide to the next. Okay, so, uh, so that looks pretty good. Let's get into some of the actual code now, some of the actual document moving on from the YAML header. Oh, I think one other thing I do want to say is um, if I hit if I go to a new line and do control space, I will get an entire list of the uh, available options. And this is kind of nice if I uh, forget exactly what I want to do or if I'm just tinkering around. Okay, so the first thing that I did in this document, um, in this presentation that I'm working on, is just to do some setup type stuff. Library tidyverse, GT, which I'm going to use to do a table in a minute, and then I'm going to read in some data using read Excel and set my theme to minimal. So that's lovely. Notice that in my document, none of that's included. So when you're doing reveal.js, by default, um, the code is not being echoed. You're only getting the output of the code, as you see with this ggplot, as I'll talk about in a little bit. So um, we can change that. We can set an option with a hash and then a vertical bar. Sometimes that's read hash pipe by um, uh, some of the positive people I've heard from. So um, I'm going to want to set my echo option just for demonstration purposes to true. If I would like to also see the output of that, I could also do message because uh, it's not actually an output. It's just sort of letting the user know that the packages are being loaded. Let's just demonstrate that. And while I'm at it, let's also put in a label on this chunk as my setup chunk. And I'll render that. So this won't look as good, but it's, uh, again, for demonstration purposes. So there it is. Not the best, you know, I'll go ahead and take all that out. One thing I do kind of miss about R Markdown is um, that when you go to start a new R Markdown document, there's a setup chunk by default that sets some options for you and, uh, and gives you some space to do this kind of thing. You know, it's not a big deal that I have to do this on my own in Quarto or make a template to do it uh, uh, a little more programmatically, but it's also not, not my favorite thing here. Okay, so um, now let's get into an actual slide. To officially start a slide, you do this double hash. So double hash in this vid and then a plot, and then I have another double hash here with the title of the slide, Decision Trees. So let's go ahead and look at that now that we uh, know, the, know that element of it. So new slide in this vid with the GG plot, new slide with the title, Decision Trees, with a little bit of content there. Okay, great. I think I want to put in a background next. So after these double hashes, you can set attributes for your entire slide with these braces. And what I want is background dash image, and then an equal sign, and then I have to say the actual name of the file. So it's background dot jpg in this case. That should do it background duh not guh there we go try that again and there you can see I've got this lovely little background now that's some clip art that I just found from the internet a long time ago I'm sorry I don't have a source on that if you uh, if you happen to know where I might have found that please shoot me an email I'd love to I'd love to know that now notice that only applied to the one slide Quarto is supposed to be maximizing your flexibility here, letting you put in different backgrounds on all of them. 
So I'm just going to copy and paste this into my next uh, into my next slide on decision trees. In this case, it goes after the title. No big deal. Now, even if I even after I render this, I'm still not quite going to have that background on all my slides. I will have it on the decision tree slide and the ggplot slide, but not on the title slide. The reason is that the title slide isn't made using these sort of double hash delimiters. Instead, it's coming directly from this YAML header. So if we want to get a background on our title slide, we have to set it in our YAML header. In our YAML header. So in this case, what we need is a title-slide-attributes. And you'll see it started a new line. Um, our studio started a new line and indented for us because you can set many different attributes here. The one I want is data dash background dash image. You can see all of the different options that, that could be useful to you in different contexts. And so the one I want again is background dot JPG. Let me render that. Make sure it worked. Make sure I don't have any typos, background or something. All right, so that's looking great. Looking at my more finished product, the next difference I want to address here is the two columns with the table on the left and the plot on the right. Okay, so um, now I'm not really trying to um, set an attribute for the entire slide necessarily. I want to start below the in this vid stuff. So I can do that with um, Quarto's native div divider. This is called a fence. You need at least three colons. I'm going to use four for reasons that will become apparent in a minute. And uh, this basically just sets an environment that's letting uh, Quarto know, hey, we're going to set some attributes for a while. Later on, I'll close up that environment with another fence with the same number of colons. Technically, you can use uh, just three at the end. I recommend always using the same number when you close it up just for legibility and clarity. Then in a brace, you need to say hmm, what you want to do, what's special about this environment. And me, I want columns here. OK, so um, within the columns environment, I need to set two different columns. You can set more than two, but I just need two. This time, I'll only use three colons. So a fence is at least three. So I used four up here. Here I'm using three to distinguish that I'm sort of another layer in. And now I want dot column. And then I'm going to do some stuff. So I'll get a code chunk. And then when I'm done with that stuff, I'll close up my column. So what do I want to do here? Well, I've got this, uh, this data set DT example. It's just a toy data set that I made to illustrate decision trees. I'll throw it on my GitHub. I'll uh, make sure there's a link down below. I'm going to take DT example and just pipe it into the GT function. That's from the GT package. I think it stands for great tables. So that should look nicer. All right, so that's my first column. The, this fence right here is going to close up that environment, end that column. Now I want a second column, dot column. Then the ggplot. And then I need to close up that environment. So how about colon, colon, colon. Render it to make sure that I got that all organized appropriately. And hey, look at that. Two columns with the table and the ggplot. Now, it's not perfect yet, of course. In particular, both the columns have equal width. And so this table, I think, has a lot more white space than it really needs. There's, this column is too big. Um, additionally, the ggplot, in addition to not having enough space, it's just not tall enough. So I'm going to want to work on this stuff a little bit. All right, so let's go back. And first of all, just set the column widths. That's really simple. Inside the um, these braces here with a dot column in it, I can also set different attributes for that column. And what I want, of course, is width. And I'm going to go ahead and do it at 30%. I need that in quotes because of the percent sign, I think is the reason. And I'll copy and paste that and down here. Instead of 30%, I'll do 70%. And we'll see how that looks. There should be a little bit less white space now, hopefully. Yeah, so that's looking a little better. Now, I'm also going to want to make this plot a little bigger. I want to do it using the ggplot part of the code because I don't want to just stretch this. I'd rather have um, it look unstretched. I'd rather just have the ggplot come out 
um, with different um, different dimensions built in at the sort of ggplot level. So that means I'm going to set an attribute here within the R code. So uh, it's another hash pipe there to set an attribute for this. And what I want is fig dash height. And I tinkered around with this and I came up with a fig height of six look pretty good. Believe it or not, I do practice these vids before I shoot them to some degree or another. So uh, that's that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be pretty happy with that. All right, the next thing I want to work on is this callout box. Right now, all I have is a title and then the stuff about the decision tree classifier. What I'd like instead of a title of a slide is decision trees to be next to this nice little light bulb that cool greenish blue background aqua background it kind of fits in with the the colors that i have on my uh my background image and then these other words in here okay so um let's see here looking down at this next slide i'm going to cut out the title of the slide because i'm not going to need that and uh now i'm going to need to set up another temporary environment here so i need another fence this time i'll just do three and um before I say anything else, maybe I'll go close that up so I don't forget. All right, so the thing that I need in here actually now is a callout. Callout, and there's several different kinds. I'll do callout tip. Um, and I think that's all I initially need. So there's um, several different kinds. There's note, warning, I think important, and um, I'm forgetting one, caution, I think. And they have different colors and different icons. So there it is, tip. Now, I don't want the word tip, I wanna replace that. And so I get what I wanna do is um, title equals, oops, no, no space in here, decision trees. And that'll replace the word tip with the words that I've put in there, decision trees, just like that. Okay, so in my original presentation that I'm, the presentation I'm aiming for here, I then have a pause and uh, then an inserted image. Okay, so let's get the pause first. A pause means that I want my slideshow to display this part of the slide, and then when I page forward to give me the next part of the slide along with what I already have. In Quarto, the way you do that is with three dots with spaces in between. So that's gonna give me that pause. The next thing that I want is actually this image. and um, to let Quarto know you want an image, you put an exclamation point, a hard bracket with whatever caption you want. I'll just put caption for the moment. And then a parenthesis with the name of the file. And the name of my file here is tree underscore plot dot PNG. So uh, that should give me a, a basic, a basic uh, included image in my Quarto document. Okay, so paging forward, there's my call out box and my pause. And then when I page forward, I get my image. Now, I'm not in love with the sizing of this. It's kind of big and clunky. Because it's so big and clunky, you can't really see, but here the, uh, the image is aligned left. I'm actually gonna want it aligned center. So I'm gonna wanna go back and change two attributes of this. So I can do this in a similar way as I have elsewhere. It's a brace, and then I need to put in the new attributes. So it's fig-align with an A and it's equals center. Just render that to test it. Are you seeing how often I'm rendering everything's that, everything? That's to, to idiot check myself. You know I'm typo prone, and so I like to, if I'm making a mistake, I wanna catch it as soon as possible because then I know where it comes from. If something doesn't render, it might be a bit of detective work to figure out where the issue was. Okay, so fig align center, and then I, what I want is width equals Maybe 75%, I think that's what I came up with. Oh, did you notice um, that Quarto is not auto-filling the second quote here? If you're used to working in RStudio, that can be a, a little bit annoying. You just have to remember it. Okay, and there's my slide looking kind of like I want it. I'll go ahead and remove this caption. I don't think I need that. So I just need to delete that word. I still want the, uh, the hard brackets on either side. All right, so let's get a new slide. Maybe I'll just copy and paste from up here because I still want my background image. 
great. And uh, the only thing I have left to do is my ggplot. Here's how I made that plot. OK, so I'm going to go back up here and just copy and paste my ggplot. And um, of course, I'm going to want a code chunk. So let's put that in. Now this time, I'm going to actually want to see the code. So I need an option. So let's do a uh, hash pipe again. And it's echo true. So echo back the code as you give me the output. Now. By default, when I render this, the um, the code is going to come in right above the um, the plot, which, by the way, is aligned left. I'm going to take care of that while I'm at it. So um, you can set the def you can set the behavior for where the plot actually appears. First, let me do fig dash align center to take care of that. And uh, then let's change our position. So what we want is output location. The default is to have it stacked. There's a couple I want to point out. The first is column. It's not going to look so great here, but let's see it. So it made them as columns of equal width in this case. And it, you know you can scan back and forth here, but you can't see all the code and you can't even see the ggplot very well. There's times when that looks nice. This is not one of them. Fragment um, is another one. This will give me a pause in there. So here's the code. Then here's the plot when I page forward. And um, another one I'll point out is slide. And slide is going to put the actual output on the next slide. So there's the code. I move forward. I see the output. All right, I'm pretty happy with the stacked version, so I think I'm going to leave that. Just get back to there. Now, in my original, you'll see that I have the code, and then I kind of page through, and you can see different parts of it highlighted, which is really nice if you're doing a presentation where you actually want to talk about the code and sort of teach what's going on. So um, the thing that we need there is another chunk option, of course. And what we want here is code-line-numbers. and um, in brace, or rather in quotes, I have to say which ones I want to highlight. So if I just want to highlight two to three, I can put that in quotes. And I'll just show that. So just lines two to three are highlighted here. Now, what I had previously was a situation where I could page through and see different parts of it highlighted. So if I want to do that, I need to separate the different lines with a vertical bar. So in my second slide, I want to highlight four to six. And in my third slide, seven to 10. And that should work just fine. I also want to point out how these things are numbered. So the numbering started from the using the lines of code here, not the things that are on the left in your, um, your RStudio IDE. So the first line, line number one, according to code dash line dash numbers, is actually the first line of code that actually shows up here. Now, there's one other small thing here that's different between this and my original presentation. And that is, in my original presentation, I started with everything highlighted. So I can take care of that just by putting a vertical bar at the very beginning. And now when I render it, everything will be highlighted just like I like. By the way, there's nothing that says that all of these uh, these intervals, 2 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 10, have to be disjoint. I could have done 2 to 5, and then 2 to 6, and 2 to 7 if I liked. All right, checking my work one last time. I page into the slide that has my ggplot. All the code is highlighted. Paging forward, just 2 and 3, then four, oh, 4 to 6. I actually want 4 to 5. Let's fix that really quickly as we wrap up. I want 4 to 5. And then 6 to 8, there's only 8 lines of code here. I'll click Render one more time, come back, check it one last time, 4 to 6, 4 to 5, and then 6 to 8, just like I'd like. OK, so that should be enough to get you started making a beautiful slideshow presentation using R, RStudio, and Quarto. Enjoy.